If you want to learn React today, sit tight and enjoy this video because in the next 20 minutes, you are going to understand React and its core concepts. To watch this video, you don't need any prior knowledge in React, but you must be familiar with HTML, CSS and JavaScript. I hope you are ready because this tutorial will start now. Chapter 1. What is React? React is a free and open source front-end JavaScript library for building user interfaces. React has been created by Meta employees and is now the most popular framework for front-end web development. It is known for its speed, simplicity and reusability. Chapter 2. Setting up React to work with React, you need Node and NPM. To check if you already have them, go to the terminal and type Node-V. As you can see, I already have Node.js and also NPM. If that's not the case for you, go to Node.js.org, download and install the recommended version for most users. Then come back to the terminal and do these tests. Now another thing that it's not mandatory but will make it easier to create new React projects and run them locally is Vt. You can check for the Vt version by typing Vt-V. If you don't have it already, type npm install Vt. Don't forget to include the dash G flag so you can install it globally on your machine. Now that we have everything we need, it's time to create our first React project. So go to your desktop and open a new folder for your React projects. Now go to Visual Studio Code and open that folder. To create our first project, let's type npm create vite. Let's give it a name. We can call it React Counter. Now it's time to choose the framework. As you can see, vite can be used with Vue and other JavaScript frameworks. For this one, we are going to choose React. Vite also allows us to create a project with TypeScript, but in this case, we are just going to work with JavaScript. Now let's reopen that specific folder and start a new terminal. When you create a new React project or you start using an existing project for the first time, run npm i to install all dependencies. Now we can see that the node modules folder has been created. We can now type Vite to run the project locally. Chapter 3 Folder Structure When you create a React project with Vite, you are going to have a default folder structure. The most important folder here is the source folder, which is where all the development files will live. The root file here is the main.jsx, and we can see that we are rendering the application inside an HTML element with an ID of root. If you go to the index.html file, you will see that this element is right here. So inside here will be all the visible part of our application. Now inside this function, we have the strict mode enabled, which will allow us to identify and fix errors more easily in our code. Then the root component of this application is the app component. As you can see, we always import components like we are doing at the top here, and then we use them just like HTML elements. So let's go inside this component to see what we have here. The design we are using here is called function component, which requires a function with the component's name. Inside this function, we will write all the logic and the template for our component. At the bottom of the file, we export the component so we can use it from other locations, just like I showed you on the main file. Chapter 4, JSX. Let's erase all this so we can start from the absolute beginning. You probably noticed that the components of our application are not plain JavaScript files. They have this new extension called JSX. JSX is like a mix of HTML and JavaScript. For the HTML part, it must be inside the return statement of the function. And it is important that you have one single root element inside here. It can be any HTML element, like a div. 
but it is normal to use this thing here called fragment. This will act as an HTML element, but it's not going to create a new element in the DOM tree. So inside here, we can start writing some HTML. We save this, we go back to the browser and we can see it showing on the page. Just be a bit careful because what we use inside JSX is not exactly HTML. It looks a lot like HTML, but there are some differences. For example, we don't use class, but class name. So when you want to add a class to your HTML element, use class name instead. Another thing to pay attention with JSX is that you must close all elements. For example, if you have an image which doesn't have a closing tag, you must always close the start tag, otherwise you will have an error. Now that we wrote some HTML, let's see how we can add JavaScript. I'm going to create a new variable first, and now to output this value, we can just use single curly braces in the template. If we save this and go back there, we can see the dynamic title showing. We can also run any JavaScript expression. For example, if we do a math operation, we can see the results showing on the page. Chapter 5, Components. A React application will always be divided into small components. This is going to ensure that we have a clean code that is easier to maintain. Now to add a counter to this page, we will do it on a separate component. So let's start a new file and call it counter. The file names and the function for your components must always start with a capital letter. Now we can copy the structure of the app component to save time. And one thing to notice about components is that normally they will have their own styles in a separate CSS file. For the counter, I'm not going to add any styles for now. So let's just create a function called counter. Let's erase everything else here and we can add an H2 to show the counter. Now let's export this component and up here we can create a new variable which will start at zero. We can output that count right here. Now inside the app component, let's import our new counter component. And then we can use it just like an HTML element. We can save and go back there and we can now see the content of the counter component showing on the page. Let's also create a component for the buttons. Normally, we would have a single component for each button. But to make this example simpler, I'm just going to create one for three buttons. Now we can add the buttons, one for increase, one for decrease, and another one for resetting the counter. Now let's import the buttons component and use it down here. We can save it and we see them showing on the page. If you want to change the default styles for the buttons, you can just go to the index.css file, find the button and then add something like margin or any property you want to change here. Chapter 6, State. State represents the dynamic data in our app. Not all variables are part of the state, just the ones that require an immediate re-render of the application. If we change the value of the count variable, we need to see the change showing immediately on the page. So this is an example of a state variable. So going back to Visual Studio Code, let's remember that the variable was placed inside the counter component. If we change the value of this variable when clicking the button, we won't see the change being reflected immediately because we haven't created this variable as a state variable yet. To turn this into a state variable, let's first import a React hook called useState. Don't forget to add the curly braces. Now this is going to come from React. Now when creating the variable, we are going to add another thing here, which is going to be the setter function. This is going to be used to change the value of the state later. It is a common practice to name it as set and then the name of your state variable. So in this case, set count. Now we are going to call use state and we are going to pass any initial value. Let me change this to one just so we can see if this is showing correctly. We save this, we go back there 
and now we can see the value of that variable showing on the page. Now the difference is that being it a state variable, every time we change its value, we are going to trigger a re-render of the application. Chapter 7, Lifting the State Up We have created our state variable inside the counter component. But the problem here is that the buttons will also need access to this variable. This is because when we click them, we will need to change the value of the variable. So to fix this problem, we are going to do something that in React is called lifting the state up. We are going to move the state to the closest common parent of these two components. Now let's import use state from the app component instead, and let's place that state variable here. Now we just need a way to pass the value to the child component. Chapter 8, Props. With props, we will be able to pass data to child components. In this example, we created a state variable in the app component, and we need to pass the value to the child component. Let's go to the counter component. Let's create a new prop. We can call it count. And then we can pass a dynamic value. For that, let's use curly braces, and we can pass that variable. Now inside the counter component, we need to declare the props up here when we create the function. So in this case, we are going to receive something called count, and then we will be able to use it in our template. Let's change the value to see if this is working. Let's save the file, and we can see that the value is being passed to the child component correctly. Chapter 9, Mutating the State. If you want to change the value of the state, you can use the setter function. Before doing this from the child component, let's do a quick test inside the app component. So I'm going to add a new button. Now whenever we click this button, we want to change the value of count. And for that, we can use the onClick event handler. Let's pass the curly braces and use the setter function. Between parentheses, we are going to pass the new value. In this case, let's use count plus one. So every time we click the button, we are going to increase the counter by one. Now there's just one thing we need to adjust because when we call a function that doesn't have arguments, we can just call it directly like we did. But when we have arguments, we need to wrap it inside a function. So let's do that. We save this. We go back there, and now every time we click the button, we're going to increase the counter. Since this is a state variable, every time the value of the counter changes, this is going to trigger a re-render of the application. Chapter 10, Passing Custom Events as Props. We just created an event handler to mutate the state, and we added to this test button. Now let's see how we can access the setter function from inside child component. Let's erase this test and let's create a function called handle count. For now, let's just increment the counter by one so we can quickly test. Now let's go inside the buttons component and let's create a custom event called change count. And whenever we click this button, we are going to emit this event to the parent component. Now we can copy this, go back there, and here we're going to tell React that when the change count event is fired, we're going to execute something on this site, which is going to be the handle count function. Since we have no arguments for now, we don't have to use the arrow function. If we save these files and go back to the browser, we can see that the function is working. But this is still not what we need. We need to be able to increase, decrease, and reset the counter. For that, we are going to change this function slightly. We are going to create an argument called action, and here we can add a switch statement, which will get the action and will execute each of them. So when we receive the action of increase, we are going to run this code. Now let's add the other cases. We have decrease and also reset which is going to set the counter to zero. Now we need to pass the action when we fire the event. So let's go to the buttons component 
And here, instead of just emitting the event, let's pass an action. And for that, we know we must wrap this inside a function. So now let's pass the action, which in this case is going to be increase. Now on the other side, on the app component, we won't have to include the argument here. This is going to be passed to the function automatically. So we can save this. And now when we click to increase the count, we can see that this is working. Now let's go back there and work on the other actions. Let me copy the onClick event. In this case, there will be a decrease. And there will be a reset. We save this, we go back there, and now we can increase, decrease, and we can reset the counter. Chapter 11, Conditional Rendering. Sometimes you may need to render things conditionally. For example, what if we only want to show the reset button if the counter is not set at zero? For that, we can use the value of count to do a test, but we don't have access to the value. So first, let's pass it as a prop. So when we create this component, let's pass a prop called count and let's pass the value of count. Now inside here, we can just add the count as a prop and we can now add a conditional block right here. Let's start the curly braces and the common way of using conditional rendering in React is with the ternary conditional. So we can add the test if count is not equal to zero. we are going to render this button. If not, we are not going to render anything. We can save this, go back there, and now we don't see the reset button because the count value is zero. But if we increase, we can now see the reset button showing. Now here there's one thing we can improve, because since we don't have anything to render in the else block, instead of using the ternary conditional, we can use the AND operator. If this part returns true, we are going to render this code. We save this, go back there, and we can see that this is working correctly. Now, there are other things we can do with conditionals. For example, instead of showing or not showing the button, maybe we could just disable it. So let me erase this block, and I'm going to add the disabled attribute. But instead of manually setting it to true or false, I'm going to add some JavaScript code. So let's test if the value of count is equal to zero. Then if it is, we are going to have the button disabled. Let's save this, go back there, and we can see that at the start, the button is disabled. We can't click on it. But if we increase the count, now we can click the reset button. Chapter 12, list rendering. Sometimes you will need to run loops through arrays. For this example, I'm going to create a new variable. I'm going to call it topics and I'm going to add an array. Now let's say we want to run a loop through this array and show these topics on a page. Let's scroll down and let's add a UL element. Now each of those items will be added as a list item. So let's start a JavaScript block and we can use any loop available in JavaScript. For example, we could do this with the for each loop, but a common way that most React developers use, including the official documentation, is through the map function. So let's bring the topics array and let's run the map function over it. So for every element we find, we are going to do something with it. Let's break some lines and add our HTML template. In this case, this is going to be super simple. I'm just going to add a list item element and I'm going to output the name of the topic. We can now save this, go back to the page, and as you can see, we just ran a loop and showed all the elements of that array. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please use the comment section. If you want to get serious about React, check the description of this video because I'm leaving a link for my complete course on Udemy with the promotional discount. In that course, you are going to have 14 hours of high quality videos, 130 lectures, and six real life projects so you can put into practice everything you learn. So that was all for today. I'll see you in the course.